So now we're going to look in detail at this type of basis set, the 6 311 star, oh, sorry, a G, there's a G there, G star plus. What does all of this mean? All right, so this is this Popol type basis set. Um, so the reason this something like this exists is that um, the inclusion of multiple zeta values, the multiple zeta part of the wave function, uh, generally only matters for valence electrons, right? The electrons that are involved in bonding. But as we've seen for a lot of our core electrons, the ones that aren't involved in bonding, they largely stay localized on their atoms and the sizes of the orbitals don't change that much. Uh, so the valence electrons, but not for the core electrons. And so we'd rather not uh, bother with that, right? If we don't need to include this extra complexity for these core electrons, well, let's let's split it up. Let's do something different for the core electrons and something different for the valence electrons. So this is what's known as a split valence basis set. And the way the notation works here is that everything that comes before the dash applies to the core electrons. So, you know, something like carbon, that'd be the 1s electrons, or as you get further down the periodic table, it, you know, it's, it's going to be, you know, multiple shells. Uh, and everything after the dash, of course, relates to the valence electrons. So this 311g star plus. So the numbers here, they, rep they tell us how many Gaussian functions are we using to represent our Slater type orbitals. So the six here means that our core electrons are represented by a Slater type orbital composed of six Gaussian functions. And this is pretty standard for the core electrons. Uh, that, we, that we approach them this way. All right, so the, the core electrons are the inner shell electrons. And then the valence electrons, if we have three numbers here, that means this is a triple zeta basis set. There are three different zeta values that we're using for our Slater type orbitals. And that means we have three Gaussian functions for our first zeta value, one Gaussian function to represent our Slater type orbital for the second zeta value and one Gaussian function for the third zeta value. The G here just means that we're using Gaussians to represent these. Uh, and basically all of these basis sets are gonna be composed of that. And then uh, we'll t in the next video, we'll talk about what do these star and plus mean. And so what, what we're doing here essentially is that for our valence electrons in a given atom, we use these, these combinations of functions to represent these electrons. All right, so in the next video, we'll talk about what can we add to this to help it be more accurate, and again, at the cost of t the computations taking longer. So what does the star in this plus mean?